Hey y'all, today we're gonna try to get an image as close to this handle as we can using a mug press, so stick around. Hey everybody and welcome. Uh, today's video is gonna be pretty quick, I think. Of course, that usually jinxes it, but today we're gonna talk about subbing onto a 15 ounce mug and getting as much subbing space as we can. And let me give you some details. I have a Heat Press Nation Signature Series mug press that I absolutely love. I got it with just the 11 ounce slash 15 ounce mug attachment. And then when they came out with the tumbler attachment, uh, I purchased that as well. Love them. There will be a link in the description on purchasing one. It is an affiliate link, so I get a couple of cents if you click on it. But my wife says I have no sense, so maybe that'll be helpful. Anyway, <clears throat> I have no problem at all with the tumbler attachment. All of my tumblers now I do with the tumbler attachment. And I have no problem with the 11 ounce coffee mugs. The 15 ounce coffee mugs, if I get the image, and I don't usually do full wrap or even close to it, I usually do very specific uh, sayings or a, 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 an image right around there. And I do do both sides. But what happens on that 15 ounce is because of the way the attachment folds in, every once in a while, I'll get a little bit of fading at the edge of my image or text or whatever it may be. So I wanna go today into the press and see if we can rotate it a little bit to get that bleed to go away. And I'll tell you, I subbed the 11 ounce and 15 ounce coffee mugs at 385 degrees for 90 seconds. And again, normally I don't rotate it. I set it right in the center of the attachment. However, because of those little bits of faded edges, I wanna try to see if I can do X amount of seconds off to the left and then X amount of seconds with the handle off to the right to, to optimize that area. So let's go to the mug press and do some tests. Okay, so I don't put any red marker on my heating element. I'm going to put a little bit of tape there and then this is what I did. I pushed this in here to get it right centered and then come in here and mark it and mark it which gives me the... So here is the mug that we just marked. And again, this is a mark on where the edge of that attachment, uh, where the edge of that uh, heating element stops. So what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to get um, an image or text to not fade as it gets really close to that. So when I originally subbed it, I took the sublimation paper off way too fast and it uh, ghosted a little bit. So we're gonna start with some black strips and we're gonna put them around the uh, handle of the tumbler and see how close we can get to sublimating to that handle. I printed out these black strips and what I'll do is cut them in half and then cut them down and we will attach them to the handle area and see how close we can get to this handle uh, without fading. Okay, I have cut several strips of solid black sublimation ink, and then we're just going to, um, let's see here, we're going to put this on the, on the mug. I am gonna wrap instead of just the edges because I want it to be somewhat tight, and I know the, the, um, I know the attachment, the press won't hold it tight against the, uh, up around here. And then let me do a piece here. It's this first one I'm going to do. I'm going to do it right dead center in the middle. So that's what we've got. Save your mess ups for stuff like this. So this first piece we'll do in the middle. I got room for maybe three pieces. Um, so let's take this to the press and see uh, what happens? Okay, we are up to temperature. So here is my first strip. I am going to wrap it in a little bleed out paper. And we will slide this. Normally I take the bleed out paper, but I'm not overly concerned. Now this first press, I want it to be 
as close to the center as possible. So that handle is dead center between each side of the press. So we'll give it a total of 190 seconds and then take it out, let it cool and see what happens. Okay, we are about finished. We're gonna take this out, let it cool for a minute and see what it looks like. Okay, let's take a look at this still quite hot mug. Now, we know there's gonna be a lot of bleeding. There's gonna, be, there's gonna be bleeding on all of them. We just wanna see how much we can shift that mug to keep from bleeding a little bit far out. So here's what we've got. Here's our first one. And uh, as you can see, let me look, as you can see, it starts to fade as it gets close to the handle. Now. It's going to fade because that heating element doesn't go all the way around the handle. You want to do that, you need to go in a, a convection oven. That's not our goal. Our goal is to just try to get that image to be solid closer to the handle. So our next test, we're going to, I'm going to let this cool down a little bit more, but we're going to add another piece of a strip. And this time I did this one at 190. I normally do mugs at 190 seconds. So this time we're going to play around with it uh, and uh, adjust the time and move this handle around a little bit and see what we can come up with, okay? Okay, I have decided this first attempt will be to do a total of 230 seconds. But, hang on, let me get this as close to the edge as I can without snapping it. Okay, so I'm doing 115 seconds with the handle as far to the right as I can get it. And then I'll do another 115 seconds with the handle as far to the left as I can get it. So that's adding 40 seconds to my uh, cook time. So we, you do have to be careful because some of these colors could come out a little bit different. But for this solid black, and a lot of my uh, mugs are... Uh, solid black text. So um, we're going to see one thing to be very careful of, and I will repeat this. If that handle gets too close to the edge right here, you could snap this handle off. So you want to be really careful that you get as close to the edge as possible um, without putting undue stress on the handle. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Now, it's still not come up to pressure, but I typically um, don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. I factor that in with my, uh, with my total cook time. I just want to be careful that I'm not. Okay. So there is another 115 seconds with the handle shifted to the left. So there's a little bit better look at that handle, um, uh, towards the left side of the press now. <clears throat> and this is at 115 seconds with the handle to the right and 115 seconds with the handle to the left. And we are finished with the second side. So let me pull that out and we'll give it a second. Okay, the mug is still hot, but let's check it and see. This was two separate presses for 115 seconds each, one press was with the handle off to the right as far as I could get it, and the other one with the handle to the left as far as I could get it. And remember, be really, really careful about getting that handle too close to the actual edge because it could snap. Ask me how I know. Yeah. Okay, let me see what we got here. This mug's still hot, but my curiosity has got the best of me. Okay, so here's great news. At 115 seconds times two, my black on the edges looks great. So it didn't affect the coloring. And if you can tell, I'll take a picture, but I did get the image closer to the handle. So I don't know that any more time would help. I'm nervous about adding 
uh, time because I'm afraid we're going to affect the, the coloring. Um, I would say at this point that it was a success at 115 seconds times two. You know what? Let's try one more. Let's try um, maybe, um, I don't know. Let's, we'll figure it out. Let's try something else. One more time. Let's go. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out while the uh, press is heating up, <clears throat> if you can see, <clears throat> this middle band, this band right here, the second one up, was my press at 115 seconds. And if you'll notice, the left side is darker a little bit further than the right side. And, you know, I think that's partly because whenever I put a mug in the press, the temperature drops sometimes to 325, 330 degrees, and then builds back up to 385. And here, let me turn this off. And I'll tell you, usually I just let that be factored in. And uh, when I say 385 for 190 seconds, that includes that drop. However, because I'm adjusting the handle, I need to take that into account. So this mug is a little bit warmer than normal, but I am going to uh, let the, here, let me get this. I am gonna let this get, Okay, that's about where the um, that's about where the handle will go. But I'm just going to lean this press, lean this handle in, just uh, for a minute or two to let the coffee mug heat up a little bit. And this time we're actually going to do 125 seconds if, if, on each not each side, but 125 seconds with the handle to the right and 125 with the handle to the left. So that's adding 60 seconds to my original 190 seconds, which makes me a little bit nervous, um, but we're going to try and see. I think that that second, the 115 seconds times two would have worked a little bit better if I had done what I'm doing now and give that press a second to heat up. Now, the press isn't pushed against the mug, but I should factor this in as it is additional heat. But I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in. It's a little bit close. I don't want that handle to break. Okay, so this will be for 125 seconds, and then we'll do another 125. Okay, so once this is finished, we're gonna shift that handle to the left and do a final 125 seconds. So let's try to move this. I don't, I want my blowout paper to. Okay, there we go. 125 more seconds and we'll see what happens. Okay, our second 125 seconds. We're gonna pull this very hot mug out let it cool for a second and see what we got okay this was our second attempt we did 125 seconds for uh, each of the two presses and we're going to see how this turns out that's a whole lot of extra time what is that 60 extra seconds so i'd be nervous about colors coming out differently But I will tell you that the blacks, which, you know, blacks can be, blacks can be very difficult. Um, this, it came out great. So I don't know if you can tell, but this top band is the last one. Now on the first attempt, when I put the mug in to the right, um, I started the time and it went a full 115 seconds, but the temperature didn't get up to temp until about the end. Actually, I don't even think it got up to complete temp, and then I adjusted it, and most of the second press at 115 seconds was um, at 385 degrees. So when I did this uh, third one, or the, actually the second test, it was 125 seconds each, I laid the mug in and took that press and laid it against the edge but didn't start it for probably about 15 seconds or so and and then locked it in and let that timer start now it it took it still wasn't up to temp 
but my very fuzzy scientific thoughts on this are there was some heat on it when it was laying in the attachment. Um, and so it had less overall heat, but more time. Anyway, I want to say a special thank you to Heather and our Facebook group for asking the question. It's been a, a source of frustration for me in the past, and I never really took the time to try and figure it out. So I am going to, when I have a, an image, a design that is close to the edge on a 15 ounce mug using my uh, heat press nation uh, mug press, I will do the 120 to 125 seconds for each side letting the first press come not completely up to temp, but at least up a little bit. And um, quite honestly, in a lot of cases, I'll just make the image a little bit smaller so I don't have to worry about it. That's the easiest way to do it. But if I have an image that I need to get closer to that edge, I will probably do about 120 seconds and um, start that countdown when the temperature gets probably at about 350. So I'm pressing at 385. When I put the press in, when I put the mug in, it drops to about 325. I'm letting that edge up to about 350 before I lock in the press and start the countdown. So anyway, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please join our Facebook group. That's where the, this question came out. Got some really, really smart people in there. Uh, you can join and just sit back and enjoy the show, ask questions and help answer questions. Uh, a lot of people. I do ask that you answer the questions and agree to the group rules. There are bots out there that automatically join. So I have to make sure that I only approve people who have answered the questions, okay? It doesn't take but a couple of seconds and it's more than worth it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and um, hit that little notification bell so you'll know when more videos are coming out. Again, thanks so much. Have a great day. Of solid black, steady black, steady black. I only approve people who have Hey puppies, they'll be an outtake.